doesn't matter who you are, could be Owen Heffer or uh, one of the grooms who can't get money in his account, everybody gets sorted the same. And I think that's a huge positive. Yeah, I, I, think, I think that's probably one of the things that Hollywood is, you know, we don't do titles and we don't do egos. And uh, we've had people who've come into the business uh, with those and not lasted long. Um, and I think, you know, it takes a special kind of person to work at Hollywood. And I'm not saying that to be dismissive of anyone. I'm, I'm saying the fact that you get told you're going to do a three-month job in three weeks. It, you you know, it, yeah. guys either walk out the door or you take on the challenge. As we've said many times on this podcast, we don't like negativity, but to open, to mention that you look on the various social media platforms and you hear that there are some people out there that are unhappy with Hollywood's contribution to South African horse racing. Well, we are having none of that. We are absolutely proud, privileged, thrilled to be part of Purple Country, here, especially here in KwaZulu-Natal, and we are thankful, eternally thankful for what Hollywood have done for each and every one of us because... We earn our living off this beautiful sport. Today, we've got Hollywood uh, Brand and Communications Manager Devin Heffer with us to talk lots of good things about horse racing and about various sports. It gives me great pleasure to welcome Devin to our podcast. Dev, how are you? Thanks, Warren. Thanks so much for having me. And thanks, Andrew. Yeah, thanks, thanks so much for having me on the show. It's uh, great to be here. I... Uh, sent an email out that we have a meeting today and you have arrived in shorts and no alamites are you going to a boardroom meeting today dressed like that because you can because you're semi-retired well, i'm retired they can't fire me so I don't <laughs> <laughs> that's it andrew harrison here in his shorts no alamites andrew are you well and uh, no, i'm good day? i'm good yeah. yeah good absolutely you never change that's how you are shorts you'd fit in well at he hollywood head office because it's shorts only is that right only if you're the boss. <laughs> <laughs> Only if you're the boss. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah but I own wears shoes, though. So. Yeah, yeah. I own wears shoes, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Okay, so that's it. And the team, I must introduce our team, of course, is Tawanda, Apiwe, and Pelile. Behind the scenes, they make it all happen for us, and uh, we thank them and we welcome them as well. Lots to talk about today on In the Box Seat. This is going to be a fantastic show of that, we have no doubt. We're going to jump around, ladies and gentlemen, as we always do, and just talk about different things at different times. But I want to ask Devin about sectional timing. That's the first thing we're going to talk about. I'm not going to ask him like I always do to our guests, how did it all start? We'll get that later. But sectional timing is, is something that's in work in progress, and we were just chatting over a cup of coffee just now. Coming to hand, sectional timing. Yeah, thanks, Warren. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's definitely underway. Um, we've recently launched it on Gallup TV. Uh, we've been working with Mac Lloyds, a French-based company. Um, Dermot from our team has been working closely with them and working with uh, the horse racing team at, at Gold Circle and getting this set up. Obviously, a fantastic uh, job by GTH, you know, in getting, in getting the ball rolling. I mean, it's, it's one of those things we'll be the first to put our hands up to say, We've wanted it for a long time, but it's kind of bumbled along, and I know it's been trialed previously and didn't quite work out. But uh, the fact is, um, you know, the, the, the markers have been set up, um, you know, and it's now something that's on the move. So at the moment, yeah, it's now happening for KZN Racing on Gallup TV. We've, we've still got quite a bit of work to do with the graphics at the moment. Uh, at the moment, you can, you know, track your, your horse throughout the race which is always helpful and obviously the colored saddle cloths makes a big difference because yeah. now you know you can see on screen where your horse is placed but uh i think you know obviously we want to get the, the the clock showing you know the the stopwatch showing we want to get the sections you know the 400 800 going um i think you know when you watch american racing hong kong racing and you talk to punters from there and you talk to guys who follow racing from that side it it it, it makes a big difference in terms of um, following your horse during the race and and seeing how the speed is going and obviously taking form to the next level so obviously it's a, it's a whole thing we're going to be incorporating and um, we at the moment also down in the cape trying to get that sorted for hollywood bets durbanville and hollywood bets kenilworth so yeah, I mean it's it's something South Africa has been dying for. I think for a long time. I think it's going to add another almost bow to the arrow for uh, um, punters, and hopefully, yeah, it can make a big difference. But yeah, we're on the move. I think sectional timing is probably you big, big in that. 
Yeah, well, it's, you it's, love it's, it. Yes, I know. Because if you know how fast the horse is going from the 400 to the 200 to the thing, and, how f- and, and you compare it to other races, and you compare the going and all that, I mean, it, it's just a, it's an invaluable punting tool. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. I know you're quite right. The, I know the, the Winning Form publication, which is part of you guys as well, I know that it's an, and I don't say it disrespectfully, it's an old program, it's a brilliant program, and, and how much it can be tweaked. The point I'm making is, will that information be able to be incorporated into the winning form in time, the, 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 the sectional timing times and all the rest of it? Yeah, I, I, I think so. I think that would be the goal. Um, you know, if we can't get into the print edition, it would definitely be online. Online, you know, okay. I think, I think that's the way things are moving at the moment. I mean, we, we launched a new website for winning form probably over the last two years, and it's... It's starting to gain more traction. Obviously, you guys love the old, the old site. The old site's still getting majority of the hits. But, um, yeah, I mean, you know, the print is going down. But, you know, the, the, the beauty with digital is you can make these changes. You can make additions. Um, you can sort the way you want to sort. I think, obviously, um, you know, there's, there's different methods. That, and I think the beauty is it's not just going to be winning form. It's going to be available to all publications. Okay. Um, and I think that's, that's always how we've tried to operate is, is to to make information available to everyone because at the end of the day we, you know we're not selling information we're selling bets you know and that's what you want you want all the punters to have as much information available to them as possible no i was just looking at something i was on uh sporting post the place of complaining about a lot of um the country sort of uh, betting shops closing down and i see hollywood <laughs> <laughs> i drive through a bloody Shitty little town called Carolina. Yeah, in Pumalanga. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and there's Hollywood bets. I mean, it's brilliant. No, well, that's, I mean, that's it. I think, you know, for us, I mean, we diversified our betting product quite early on, yeah. you know, with soccer betting and lucky numbers and all that. And, uh, I mean, when you go to Pumalanga, Limpopo, that's lucky numbers country, you know, that's, that's, that's football betting country. And, and I think, you know, not too much horse racing, but... Those, those products are keeping those branches yeah, going yeah. and allowing us to open more branches. And, uh, yeah, I mean, we, we're on 98 at the moment, so we're two yeah. away from the big century. Yeah, but, but it's, nice, it's nice. I mean, you can, you can go into a small little Blickies, Blickies dorp somewhere in the middle of town and you can have a bet. We went on a, on a tour, not on a tour, on a road trip a couple of years ago, and uh, we were past Plumfontein, came up in the bush there. Uh, we were, and I, I wasn't having a very good betting day and my funds yeah. ran out. And I said uh, to my wife, I said, well, let's pull over at this little shop on the corner. And she said, are you mad? There can't be any pity. They wonder what you're talking about. Truth, Bob, have you got a Hollywood voucher? Yes, we have. Top me up. Uh, top me up, Holly. Yeah. And uh, we were game over again. So, yeah, absolutely. That's, so that's you lost some more money. Yeah. I lost <laughs> some money, but that's all right. You win some, you lose some. But what I wanted to say to you is you talk about betting shops, some betting shops closing down. Yes, you know, maybe because they haven't got the, 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 the foot traffic that goes through, etc. But you've got to also understand it's about the experience when you go into that betting shop. You know, and I'm not saying it because Devin's here. And I don't go into betting shops often. I, I prefer to use my Hollywood and, and, and tab gold on my phone here. But when you go into a, a betting outlet, you get greeted by people. You get a, a good service. You get a good meal. The TV's on, on or everywhere you look, there's TV's. So it's also those that have closed down should maybe ask themselves, what are they doing wrong that they're closing down? Hmm. You know, that's the point. But be, be that as it may. Let's talk about Durbanville, Hollywood Bets Durbanville, and Hollywood Bets Kenilworth. Uh, Durbanville's up and running, and there's been some fantastic racing. Um, but the grand old lady, Kenilworth, has had a major facelift. And this weekend um, is the launch, if we can call it. But let's touch on those two centres, because, my oh my, they are gorgeous race courses. Yeah, it, it, it's, it's been amazing to see the turnaround. I mean, you know, obviously this, this deal um, in terms of Kenilworth Racing, Cape Racing, and working together with Greg Bortz has come very quickly. And I think that's been the nature of the beast is that, and I think why we've enjoyed the whole experience so much is because there's no time for talking, there's only time for doing. And I think we've done more for probably Cape Racing. When I say we, I'm talking Cape Racing on Hollywood Bets in the last three months than I think that's happened in the last 20 years. And, and that's not coming from me, that's coming from the stakeholders, the owners, the trainers, the jocks. And there's this new energy that, that's, that's happening in Cape Racing. I mean, I've been lucky enough. I mean, I'd never stepped foot in Durbanville before. Um, but, you know, when we arrived there at the beginning of August to have a recce, you know, to kind of see, you know, we, we did Milnerton, did Philippi, did Kenilworth. And for me, Durbanville was actually the one thing I thought had the most potential because it's, it's small, it's cozy, everything's close to each other. You know, you walk through the entrance 
it's 40 meters to the parade ring it's 20 meters from there to the clubhouse and 20 meters to the track you know and then you turn left you've got the the bookies and the totes on the left so the the, the beauty is that what's sometimes nice about that in Durbanville is sometimes less is more you know and um, the fact that you can get so close to action and for us to kind of start our Cape racing experience there was kind of almost a bit of the luck you know we always talk about the Hollywood luck and um, it allowed us to kind of you know get entrenched in it and I mean the, ma the, the fact is that normally they'd say you know you get 20 30 people on course for meeting at Durbanville if you're lucky and over the two weekends that we had for the match mistakes and um, the one prior to that the feature race prior to that we had over a thousand people on each sure. weekend and it was amazing because as I said when we arrived there in August it looked a bit tatty it looked a bit tired and it was amazing what just a face facelift and a little bit of paint can do and um, a little bit of attention to detail I think that's probably the biggest thing and you know we've got an incredible team that you know as you you know with Hollywood we're quite diverse in terms of our companies that are within the companies and winning media our signage company did an incredible job I mean they put their last sign up two minutes before the first race <laughs> on that first Durbanville meeting on the on the finish line I had to run across to our guy to wave to get him away from the the finish because the horses were loading but it, it was amazing to see the just the morale boost because I mean I know Greg was on this podcast and he talked about how the patient wasn't critical the, the patient was dead you know and I think <laughs> and I, I think you know it was just kind of one of those things it was a bit sad to see that Cape Racing had come to that stage but there's just this renewed yeah. vibe and, and it's really going well and I mean we, we had our last meeting at Durbanville yesterday Hollywood Bets Durbanville yesterday um, you know the Spring Country Series was a fantastic run of eight race meetings um, couldn't have asked for better um, and yeah I think now everyone's as you say returning to the grand old lady we've, we've been working really hard I mean as sponsors of the race courses um, the Cape Racing team and Greg have been you know, using their capital to really uplift and renovate because there was a lot of work that needed to be done there. You know, I mean, um, you know, it's, it's one of those things we've got to lift the standards. And I think, you know, I must take my hats off to Gold Circle because, I, I you know, only being Durban based, you know, you only know what you got. And um, when I look at here at Sommerfeld and the training centers and you compare it to what Mulleton was looking like and Philippi, it, it, we, it's chalk and cheese yeah. you know I mean yeah. we, we're really blessed to what we've got here at Summerfelt and Ashburton so but they've been hard at work and I think that's the whole thing is also it's not just looking after the owners and their racing experience it's looking after the punters the trainers the jockeys the grooms I think that's probably been the biggest thing is making sure the grooms are going to have proper accommodation because you can't have this Cape Race initiative where you want to bring South Africa to the Cape and you don't have all the, the facets covered. Sure. So, I mean, we've, we've done extremely well with that. And again, when I say we, talking about Cape Racing and their team also, you know, I think they've got the support that they've been dying for. Um, you know, when I talk from a marketing perspective, uh, Kirsty Lyle and Donovan Everett that we've been working with there, um, Troy Finch, you know, guys who love their racing, love their eventing, love doing what they do. And you can just see they, they yeah, on a good hold, they got yeah, you know. They have, you know, I, I, I talk about when when uh, uh, Gravel became Hollywood Bits Gravel, um, and the naming rights, etc. I'll never forget, and I've told you that story before, and and we'll get onto it later because I want to ask you the question: is How does the team do it? And you were just saying there was a couple of minutes to go to the first race, and you were chasing the guy off, and he was putting the last nail in. I'll never forget driving off. Obviously, in my car, I didn't drive off <laughs> on, my, uh, on my car. Driving. Not your horse. No, you're not on my <laughs> horse. But out the race course. And I stopped for a second before the boom gate. And I looked back and I looked around. I said, but it's 10 to 5 in the afternoon. And tomorrow's the launch. And I didn't see one splash of purple yet. And I got home and I said, no, it can never happen. Truth, Bob, the next morning I was there at 6 o'clock for the get -ups. That whole race course was in purple. How do you guys, I'll ask you the question now. How do you do it? I mean, how does your team do it? It's phenomenal survival yeah <laughs> I, I think i think you don't have a choice yeah. I, I, th I think i mean you talk about that you know the announcement was it was the day before the gallops for that's the July. it that's right, it yeah. yes and, right. and, and it was critical for us i mean you know we knew in the background that you know the the race course announcement was coming we had been working on weeks to, to get everything ready 
Um, but the public didn't know. Um, a lot of people at Gold Circle didn't even know. You know, it was basically the, the exec that knew. And uh, the thing is, if we were going to make an impact, we had to make it from the get-go. Yes. You know, we couldn't kind of, you know, you know half try. You know, and, and, and that's the thing with Hollywood. We don't do anything yeah, half. Absolutely. Yeah, and it was one of those things. Um, our, our guys had to wait. You know, there was a meeting on Monday and there was a meeting on Wednesday and then the gallops on the Thursday. So we couldn't actually do anything. Because if you wanted an impact, you couldn't start early in the week. Sure. And we had to wait till the final race on the Wednesday. And eventually, uh, the last race was at 10 to 5. At 5 o'clock, our guys were on, on course, and they just started moving. And they finished at 4.30 in the morning. Sure. I know they put that big sign up on the tote board, and the wind was howling that night. It was 30, 40 kilometer winds, and they managed to somehow secure it down. And I don't know. I'll never know how they did it. But, um, you know, Eugene, Jamian, and the team from Winning Media were just absolutely incredible how they just they got to the task and they did it and i mean it was mind-blowing when you walked in the next day because your know, people were literally blown away and I, I think it's one of those things at hollywood i mean we, we we've just recently rebranded hollywood bets king's park now you know okay. which is the big rugby state well D- durban's iconic rugby stadium and that too we we had come together with them we came to an agreement that we'd be taking over the um, the naming rights and we also we wanted to get it done we wanted the season was starting in January because there you know, you know with COVID everything got moved around and all that stuff and it was going to URC was going to kick off in Jan and we managed we, we we actually looked at another signage company that had been doing a lot of the work at King's Park and they said it would take us three months three to four months to get it done sure and we didn't have that time but our guys said okay well we, we've got no choice let's get okay. cracking you know, 22 hour days and let's, let's go. And um, they managed to get it done in three and a half weeks. And, um, and it, it was amazing. I think it was 1.6 kilometers of signage. And, um, you, know, you know, guys hanging from the roofs there, which is, yeah, I think it's seven, eight stories high. Sure. So, I mean, it, it was amazing that just that kind of, you know, that drive and passion and that kind of, you don't have a choice. And I think, I think you know, if you look at, Hollywood and winning form and how the company's grown over the years and where it starts and where it is today that's always been a common theme is that you don't have a choice you know if you if you if you don't fight for survival you're going to die and uh, I think it's it's amazing how it's worked out but Dev it must be a, a, a reflection on, on management that people will actually be prepared to work like that <laughs> and because <laughs> if, if take special people <laughs> yeah well if you had transnet you know, that will be on strike yeah <laughs> <laughs> but yeah because 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 sorry to button because they treat it properly the, the, yeah. the people are treated properly so you treat them the same as anything you treat your animal but other another point is no matter whether it's andrew harrison uh, warren and Ferner, we are staff members and colleagues or devon's cousin or a stranger who needs help, if you contact them and say, I, I, I'm battling with this, I can't load my voucher, they fix the problem. You know what I'm saying? Everybody gets treated the same. That's the point I'm making. You, you, your, your query gets dealt with, your, your, your problems get sorted, doesn't matter who you are. It could be Owen Heffer or uh, one of the grooms who can't get money in his account. Everybody gets sorted the same. And I think that's a huge positive. Yeah, I, I, think, I think that's probably one of the things that Hollywood is, you know, we don't do titles and we don't do egos. And uh, we've had people who've come into the business uh, with those and not lasted long. Um, and I think, you know, it takes a special kind of person to work at Hollywood. And I'm not saying that to be dismissive of anyone. I'm, I'm saying the fact that you get told you're going to do a three-month job in three weeks. It, you know, it, yeah. guys either walk out the door or you take on the challenge. And I think when you look at, you speak to anyone, I mean, the people I work with in the marketing team, I mean, in the last three months, we've done 47 events. Sure. I mean, it's, it's phenomenal. I mean, we're supposed to be a betting company, you know. <laughs> I mean, but the fact is, you know, you're looking at Comrades Marathon, Hollywood Super League, Durban July, Hollywood Bets Durban July, um, you know, it, you know, <laughs> Brentford kickoffs, you know, I mean, I mean, starting the seasons, there's, there's so much on the go. And I mean, the, the team that we work with are absolutely incredible because they've just got this motivation to get the job done and not only just get the job done, but go over and beyond. I think that's the thing is, is we've got this constant thing of constantly trying to improve. Um, we call it bent where we talk about being better even next time or even better next time. So whatever event we do, whether it's you know, a trip to Summerfelt with the team or it's it's the Hollywood Bets Derm July launch, we always have a meeting following it to say, where could we have done better? I mean, 
even the Hollywood Beth Slam in July, I thought it was an absolute phenomenal event. I mean, I don't think I've ever seen a team work that hard in my life. And, and that's coming from someone who works for Hollywood. You know, I mean, we, I think for six weeks straight from, you know, that build up, we, I mean, the guys were basically zombies come the day, you know. They, I mean, the team, I mean, we, we, you know, the, you worked, you know, with winning form. You know, we don't do sick, you know. And, and, I think, and, and everyone just managed to, to get through. And I think it was one of those things where, you know, the, the, the proof was in the pudding. The proof was, I mean, you looked at the product, that was the Hollywood Bets Derm in July. Um, and you could see there was no stone left unturned. There was nothing that we didn't try. And I mean, if it was a failure, it wasn't for a lack of trying. And sure. I think what's nice about that is, you know, you look back at Cape Race, well, you look forward to Cape Racing now and working with Greg Bortz, and that's his same motto, you know. And it's, he keeps talking about that in his, his, his interviews and stuff. He's like, if Cape Racing is going to fail, it's not going to be for a lack of trying, trying yeah, you know, yeah. or a lack of capital or a lack of that. It's like, if we're going to give this a go, we're going to give it a full go. And I think that's where we've got the right people working together in Cape Racing. And yeah, I, th- I think with with Hollywood's philosophy and, and Greg Bortz's yeah. philosophy too, it's pretty similar. We were treated uh, to a discussion. Remember at his hotel room at yeah, the Oyster Box yeah. where we got that award for that that very podcast. Yeah. I went there so before I came here. Uh, yeah. uh, wrong place. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah but uh, I mean, he, he's got that philosophy. You work. Yeah, simple absolutely. as simple as that. Uh, he probably doesn't take prisoners, but anyway, that's the way it goes. Well, that's right? the way it is, absolutely. You, because you must be, as you, as Devin says, you, you know, if you can't face the challenge, you know, walk it's out the door, or do it. You yeah. know, and, and it's as simple as that. Well, I but think that's. I mean, you talk about that. I think that's the beauty of Hollywood. Is if, and you don't ever want to hear those words where, <laughs> yeah. where you, somewhere, if you say I can't get the job done, I'll find someone who can. You yeah. know, and you don't want to be that person <laughs> saying, yeah, I can't do it. But I think, you know, it also goes back to that, you know, where Warren was saying earlier, you know, we're always willing to help. And I think it's not a case of saying Devin knows exactly what the answer is, but Devin's role is to find the person who does. Yeah, and I yeah, think that's, yeah. you know, everyone who works for our company and, you know, lives that philosophy and, and you've got to just get the job done at the end of the day. Well, your mom and dad obviously brought you up very well. Ah, I believe so. <laughs> yeah, I, I have to agree. <laughs> I mean, get to them now. Yeah. Oh, slot, I, I, I remember playing cricket with Owen. He was... I think I only played two games and I got dropped. <laughs> <laughs> so you, By the so, fielders. But was it, for a, la- but was it <laughs> no. for a lack of trying? Well, I didn't try very hard. I well, must but we mind you, I wasn't very good either. So. <laughs> <laughs> no. Well, I, th- I mean, I mean, even Owen. I mean, he, you know, he he enjoyed his cricket, loves his cricket. Is still, you know, to this day. I mean, it's fantastic. Um, you know, obviously being associated with the Hollywood Bets Dolphins and all that. And I mean, he always talks about his his cricket days. Yeah. You know the. Yeah. Even those, you know, those, the Natal newspaper days and yeah. the country district days and all that stuff. Were fun for days, yeah. But, uh, you know, for him, he was always working. So I, I always believe he was a really talented cricketer. And you always saw that whenever you, you got the opportunity to play. But yeah, for he, him, it was... Uh, he made all the runs and we were just hanging on the back. Yeah, yeah you know. well, <laughs> there was work to do, you know. And then, yeah, when he wasn't batting, you know, there was, there was form to study. Yeah. You know what's also... You know, <laughs> You know what's also quick about Hollywood? I, I don't often win, but uh, it's not for a lack of trying. Uh, the other day I won a, f- a thousand rond. I did my withdrawal before I'd even logged out. Bing, the money was in my account. That was fast. I was impressed with that. The deposits are extremely fast. But as I say, I only enjoyed that once because I'm normally <laughs> ten, 10 deposits to my one withdrawal. Um, yeah, I mean, even touching on that, Warren, I mean, it, I know, uh, I mean, there's always, I mean, we've got to have a few punters are watching this. And I th- it's one of those things, again, getting feedback from our clients where we've been able to improve the service because yes. we did have a, we had, we had a lull. And I think that's the, 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 the beauty of us is we can take criticism. Sure. And we, we knew our withdrawals were slowing down. And, and, okay. and I mean, we, we can blame volumes, you can blame the system, you can blame banks. The fact is, you've got to try and work out a plan to get it right. To yeah, get it yeah, right, yeah, and yeah. you know, and that's the thing is when you, you know, you you go into the war room and you say, "Listen, we've got to sort this out." And I mean, we've seen a turnaround now, and the withdrawals are getting faster, getting done quicker, and that's that's what we always try to aim for. You know, is if you can improve the customer experience, you know, you you could try to give them an excuse not to bet with you. Sure. in Racing. A lot of people have said, you know, oh, with Hollywood now taking control with Greg Bortz and Cape Racing that we're not going to lose uh, you know, Hollywood's 
passion and, 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 and interest and, and vibe in KwaZulu Natal because we're all KwaZulu Natal boys and girls. I always like to say boys. People say, why do you say boys and girls? Well, you say guys. No, guys and the girls? What about the no, girls? Well, like, the punches, girls are called cool guys these days too. No, boys and girls. So the boys and girls are, are you know, saying, well, and I said to those that have confronted me about it, I said, never, ever, can never be. KZN will always be our baby, won't it? Yeah, I believe so. I mean, I mean, again, you know, it's where we started, it's where we were born, and I think, um, you know, being able to get to the ranks of where we are now with Cape Racing came because of KZN Racing and Gold Circle, and I mean, you know, I think it's it's still, you know, you look at KZN Champion Season, you're not going to get much better racing, you know, and sure. I think every 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 area in South Africa has its own seasons and. Um, you know, we're heading now to Gauteng and then eventually to the Cape, which we are really excited about. And um, but yeah, I mean, we're always going to come back home. You know, I mean, that's sure. that's the thing. And uh, you know, we've got a job to do here still. I mean, we we know we're near the perfect product here in KZN. And um, I think any learnings we get from Cape Racing, we can extend to KZN Racing and, and vice versa. I think that's the beauty is is that. You know, I know racing has been divided for a long time and I know Greg keeps talking about bringing everyone together and we know that's not always going to be possible. But the fact is, you know, if we can share ideas, if we can share improvements that's for the better of the game, then why not? I think that's... Yeah, you know, the thing is, uh, Cape Racing now is flavour of the month because of, what, of what's happening there. So they're the big news item, sure. the headline news item. But, uh, yeah. As, yeah. But as Dave says, you know, you know each season yeah, goes yeah. And, and so you go with it. But, but I mean, yeah, that's so they're flavour of the month at the moment. But, I, I mean, we've just come off KZN. Yeah. We you know, yeah, an amazing, I mean, amazing yeah. three months, you know, that we've, I mean, from that April through, well, say May, June, July was yeah, incredible. Phenomenal. You know, I mean, phenomenal. we had the increase in stakes. We had the increase in Greens Initiative. We had... Um, you know, Hollywood Bets Gold Challenge, we had Durban July, you know, they, they, I mean, finished off with a bang with the Gold Cup, Marshalls World of Sport Gold Cup. So, I mean, there's, there's so much that, you know, it's kind of almost, you know, we've gone through the quiet period now. You know, I know, um, you know, the stakes were reduced slightly now, you know, for KZN, but, you know, the thing is, we're not in champion season yes, anymore, the, you know, and I think, yeah. and, I, and, and, and I think, you know, there, there's got to be, you know, you've got to realize that. You know, there's priorities and there's sure. things where, yeah. you know, things are going to take preference. So, again, you know, it's not saying we're not going to come back. It's, it's saying, listen, it's, it's time now for the spot other seasons. Absolutely, yeah. 100%. Well explained. Now, uh, before I talk about Brent, Brentford Football Club, we were talking about how you just said the Marshalls World of Sport uh, Gold Cup, which is what the race is. But also the camaraderie and the sportsmanship between Hollywood. I'll never forget standing. You went, you went there. I think you were at the Gold Cup, but you weren't uh, at the winners area. Later on, it was one of the last races, and I think it was your hundredth winner. Race. It was the last race, the hundredth winner, and it was Marshall's race. I think it was. Yeah. And Hollywood had obviously had a special blanket made, and they went to go and put the blanket on and Owen was standing next to us he said stop take our blanket away it's Marshall's race put their blanket on and I thought that was so sportsmanlike and and so genuine and and that for me was another clear clear example of Hollywood's values and morals yeah I mean you talk about that and the thing is you know for us it's 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 always been about growing the pie because there's enough for everyone it's not about this is our pie and it belongs to us yeah. and I think it's that kind of attitude I mean we've always worked very well you know in terms of communication with with the other bookmakers you know when you're looking at world sports betting you know they've still got the cape met coming up now in january and i mean yes it's going to take place at hollywood bets kenilworth but it's still their race you know Absolutely, and and yeah. and i mean we don't want to take anything away from their limelight and i think same with marshall's you know i mean you know on on the, you know marshall's world of sport gold cup day you know it it was fantastic you know that they actually handed over the the prize for that yeah. ungeni handicap you know for where essie vunga vunga won and it was a special moment for us but the thing is you know we can have our moments away from that you know the thing is you know they've they've put in their hard work they've put in their their, their money to 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 do that and you've got to respect that i think you know we've uh, i mean if you've ever met basil thomas you know who is uh you know one of our um exec team who you know it's one thing we always harp on about is that we call events by the correct name and teams by the correct name you know it, it's one of those things you've got to pay respect to the people who have put in the hard effort and I think that is something that we've instilled in our team you know even when I talk 
on an email. It's not Durbanville, it's Hollywood Bets Durbanville because, you know, if I don't call it that, then I'm disrespecting the team that have got us to that stage or the team sure. that have gone and worked their backside off to put the signage up or the yeah. team that's, yeah. you know, put on the show, you know. So it's, it's all those things. It might just be a name, but there's so much that goes behind, goes behind it. it. Well, you got Basil Thomas there. He was... He was he used to run general manager of, of Clearwood, Clearwood yeah. at the okay. time. Yeah. And if you didn't Clearwood know, Turf Club. Clearwood, Clearwood Turf, Turf Club. <laughs> <laughs> and if you came with the wrong tie, because in those days you had to wear a tie. You know, yes. you know, if you had a Durban Turf Club tie on, you were persona non grata. Uh, okay, he'd go and, fet, he'd go and fetch one out of the thing and swap it. But I mean, I, mean, I mean, Basil's <laughs> a great guy because, I mean, he's taken those principles of doing things properly yeah. And, yeah. and caring for your product and caring for you know things that you own and things that you've earned, you know worked for and i remember you know every person i spoke to clear turf club if you walked there and there was a piece of paper he'd be the guy you're picking, picking it up, it up and, yeah. you know and and i think that's i mean he's been working with us for a number of years now and um you know he forms part of that team that yeah. we're taking the product i still further. remember when we still had a press box right up in the top there when we there were still some journos and we used to have nice food laid out for us and everything like that and then the blokes used to say well i think Basil's got a hidden microphone here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Dev, um, I don't know too much about soccer and rugby, but because um, I'm just sick for racing, but that's everyone's different. But Brentford Football Club, that uh, I believe that, that, that before you guys took over, you talk about the Hollywood luck. Uh, they were sort of not really firing, and, and, and you guys took over. And they How just did blossomed. you find them? Yeah, yeah, tell us about that. Yeah, it's a, it's, 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 it's a beautiful story, that. Um, Funny enough, you know, it all started over a LinkedIn message, you know, and that's the beauty of uh, social media yeah. and the way the world is turning is, is the fact that um, they actually, one of their heads of um, partnerships reached out to our COO through a LinkedIn message saying, listen, we've heard about Hollywood Bets, you guys have expanded into the UK and Ireland, would you consider coming on board as a sponsor of Brentford Football Club? We're playing in the championship, they had just missed out on promotion the season before, which uh, was heartbreaking for them, but they said they're on the right path and would we like to join them on that, that journey. And funny enough, speaking to Owen about it, was there was one football club that he could sponsor in the world. It was Brentford. And, and, and it's a funny thing because everyone will say, oh, we can just say that. And Matthew Benham built his business on punting. So, you know, using analytics and using um, data analysis and all that stuff to, to build this betting product. And, um, you know, if you speak to Owen, Owen will always say he's not a bookmaker, so he's a punter. You know, that's, and I think that's probably the success of Hollywood is you look at it through the punter's eyes, not the bookmaker's eyes. And, um, you know, when that opportunity came across to become, you know, go on the back of the Brentford shirt and the back of the pants, it, we said, okay, well, let's give it a dip. And yeah, 1st of November 2020, um, yeah, it was COVID and everything. And we said, oh, let's give it a crack. And, um, yeah, Brentford went on a run of 18 unbeaten games. So, I mean, it was one of those, again, Hollywood luck. Um, and, yeah, it kind of grew from there. And uh, at the end of the season, they they won their playoff, got promotion, and, uh, yeah, off to the Premier League. And the, the current fir- their, their front of shirt jersey sponsor at the time said, listen, we, we out, we can't afford the step up. And they said, Hollywood, do you want to take it? And, I mean, that was the biggest leap I think we've ever made in our lives. And... It was, it was something that I think was an incredible opportunity and we took it with both hands. And it's amazing how that has actually changed our business in a way that it changed our logo even because our logo didn't actually work on the red and white candy stripes of Brentford. So we had to look at adjusting it, making it more bold, changing the font to look more visible and legible. And then we started saying, well, actually, it looks quite nice, you know. And, and, um, <laughs> and then everything changed. And then everything changed. Yeah, the and, um, yeah, I mean, I mean I'll, I'll always be a fan of the autograph Hollywood signature, as I'd like to call it, that logo. But um, the changes made a massive difference in terms of our brand and exposure and being more recognizable and more visible. And, yeah, I mean, it's amazing how Brentford, again, I mean, their first game in the Premier League, we're on the front of their jerseys. They crack the luck. Their game gets moved from the Saturday to the Friday, first game of the Premier League season. Now you think, okay, well, there's a bit of luck. Oh, and we're playing Arsenal. Okay, the world's going to be watching. And, uh, yeah, we score first. <laughs> and, 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 and then we go and we score again. And it was amazing to beat Arsenal on the opening game of the, 
the season again Hollywood luck and I mean that we ended up going we ended up finishing 13th in the league I think had we won our last game we got beaten by Leeds who needed the win to avoid relegation we would have finished 10th so I mean absolutely incredible but one thing you've learned from the Premier League is every every point is precious you know so I mean we drew with Chelsea last night which I thought was brilliant we played away amazingly well so yeah we 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 just got to keep boxing. I think that's a beautiful thing. And, and Brentford, I mean, it's fantastic how that relationship has grown. I mean, we had them down here. Now we got them involved um, on Hollywood Vets Durban July Day, taking over the sponsorship of the, the Garden Province Stakes. We gave them the naming rights to that. So, I mean, and what a race it was. I mean, she's a keeper, red with the white. Yes, yeah. Um, yeah. You know, the white sash. So there you go, red and white. Um, Gareth Van Sale, who we invited at the, you know, on the Thursday, we come through to our Durban July party at Springfield Park as we do every year. He said, yeah, 100% I'll be there. He spent the whole night with the Brentford guys chatting to them. Goes and she's a keeper, you know, beats Captain's Ransom, the one to three favorite. And uh, there's John Viney, the CEO of Brentford, holding, handing over the trophy to Gareth. I mean, those kind of things again. Special, call it special, luck, special. call it what you will. But um, it was one of those things you can't script. Um, and it was amazing to be able to, you know, get John over here. We, we had um, Gareth and his little boy, Dallin, you know, he loves his football. And I think loves his mo- racing probably more than Absolutely. anyone. I mean, he's probably a guy you should get on this show because I think he's the future. And um, But, uh, yeah, it's been amazing how that Brentford relationship has grown. And it all came through... Um, you know, that kind of love for how they built their club, buying their players, using analytics, not using, you know, the old tried and tested of, well, I, I, can, I can see, you know, they look the part, but what do the stats say? And I think you, you find some amazing things in stats and, uh, yeah, that's all she wrote. Tell me, Devin, uh, the sponsorship, has it increased your, your UK business? Has it, has it done it good? Yeah, I, th- I think it has. Um, the one thing I think we learned moving into the UK is that, it's a very saturated market. There is, yeah, and, of, and the thing, there's, yeah. a, there's a lot of betting companies there. And, um, you know, where I'd say we can consider ourselves a big fish in a small pond in South Africa, we are a guppy, you know, when it yeah. comes to the UK, UK yeah. and, and Ireland. Um, so it's been very hard. I think um, we've learned a lot of lessons along, along the way. You can't apply the same South African product that you do in the UK because the market is different. They want different things. And um, yeah, I think we're still navigating that path. I think we, we've got a team now that we, we're starting to build in the UK and I'm hoping that will grow from strength to strength. But the Brentford market is definitely, you know, the Brentford sponsorship has definitely given it a boost. But I think what the beauty is with the Premier League being such a global sporting league and market that if anything, it's, it's grown our business even more in South Africa. Yeah, yeah. And of course, because of course, there's Daniel Musket that you sponsor. There's the race course over there that you sponsor. There's a lot of, as you say, overseas interest as well, which can only do you good. Talking about overseas, uh, just very quickly, the Breeders' Cup, you guys always go, a whole gang of you. Are you going this, this time? or? Um, so I won't be going this year. Um, yeah, I think uh, it, it is one of those things at the moment I've got my, my, my little boy who's, who's keeping us busy at the moment so I'm, I'll give this, um, this year a miss but I mean I, I don't know who would want, not want to go I mean you know you got that flat line, flat line yeah, that my little word he's just it's, yeah. destroyed every opposition in his wake and he's going to be running in the Breeders' Cup so I mean I, I think you know it's, it's always been a tradition to go through to the Breeders' Cup um, you know it's best racing in the world I mean okay Dubai could probably argue against that but the thing is you've got the best of the best from around the world coming through to to wherever they're hosting it i mean i've been lucky enough to watch at santa anita and um, the last time i went was in kentucky at churchill downs and that was a incredible experience you know i mean you know one of probably the bucket list items to watch racing at you know or any sporting event you know but to to watch the breeders cup there was special and i mean hollywood was born out of the breeders cup you know a lot of people might not know that but it was a it was a trip there and breeders cups color being purple is where we adapted our purple from and uh the first meeting that owen went to was at hollywood park in in los angeles and that's where the name hollywood came from so yeah it's amazing how it's come full full circle um i think owen might leave it till the last minute but i wouldn't be surprised if he'll he'll be there for (laughs) i think i think everyone's excited by that horse and i think that's the beauty of it that you know 
you can go and see these amazing horses. I was lucky enough to watch an Abel run at, at Churchill Downs that year. And um, I mean, we even had Kevin Wright with us. He came on that trip and he, he missed the race prior, prior to enables race so he could see her in the parade ring okay, you know, so he could okay, be right at the front you know okay. these old jocks you know they go and make sure that they, they get to the front nice and early and it was amazing you know you see john gosden with his you know his, his racing hat and his old school you know it, it was something like out of the movies you know and frankie de Tori, you know yeah. lying up against the barn i mean it, it it was amazing and enable was just this this beast you know she she just towered over everything and you just see something and it's like that it's just amazing but yeah i mean you know it, it, we've been lucky enough to watch racing around the world and um hopefully we can tickle for a few more race courses on our bucket list but uh yeah i enjoyed the breeders cup a lot just to the viewers there's obviously a little bit of noise in the background the clubhouse is full which is fantastic because uh, we've told you it'll be blue in the face or purple in the face <laughs> that uh you know, you come out and enjoy it. It's this beautiful summer's day here on this Thursday. The horses are out there. There's a delicious breakfast being prepared, some wonderful smells. We're going to enjoy a good breakfast after this podcast. So if there's other people talking and a bit of noise in the background, do pardon us. But we're right here in this glorious, glorious podcast. But my, oh my, it's a lovely day in KwaZulu-Natal. Okay, let's move on to, uh, and we said it was going to be a long one and it was going to be a good one. There's so much to talk about and please believe me, we could sit here all day, but we can't. But let's talk about Anthony Delpesh and the Hollywood Syndicate. First of all, how many horses in training? So we, we've got 146 horses that we currently own, um, well, that are running under the Hollywood Syndicate banner. Okay. Um, you know, we've, we've, um, uh, we've managed to secure a few through leases. Um, most recently, a fantastic partnership with Ridgemont Highlands, you know, and the Keys Fetters, uh, Craig and Wayne. And that, that's just taken off, you know, in terms of um, the amounts of winners that we've been producing, especially in the Cape. And, and um, you know, but at the moment, I, th- I'd be ro- I think the number's 106 that are currently okay. in training. We've got quite a number of uh, uh, two-year-olds that are unraced. We've got a few yearlings that we've we recently acquired. So... Um, it's yeah. I mean, the stables building. I, I think we've got quite a number that are going to be making their debuts over the coming months, which is really exciting. I think there's about 30 that are going to be making their debuts. So, um, you know, getting their maiden runs. Um, but yeah, I mean, the Hollywood Syndicate has, has been a lot of fun. You know, I think for me personally, um, you know, it's taken my knowledge of racing to the next level, and especially when you work with a guy like Anthony Dalpesh. Yeah, hasn't he turned the syndicate around in a big way? I think you know the one thing about Anthony. I mean. Yes, he's a horseman, but the thing is, he's a champion, and he you don't want to lose. And yeah. I think that's that's the beauty of a guy who who who's got that fire and passion to just win. I mean, I remember when we started, and I know you guys have the the private joke about the Monday meetings on the poly, you know, and having winners, plenty winners on there. And Anthony's thing is, he wants to win graded races. He wants to win Group Ones. That's that's his goal. That's what he wants to achieve. And he will fight and do everything he can to get there. And I think. The beauty is, I mean, I watched Richard Free's interview on um, Sunday after riding Sashay away, and he was saying what a privilege and luck it is to have Anthony Dalpesh giving you instructions. Yes, yes. I mean, you know, you know, I mean, yes, your trainers know the horses, and, you know, the grooms work with them every day, but there's a guy who's ridden, you know, he's a three-time South African champion, and he's won four Durban Julys, he knows what he's doing, and... I think it's 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 been amazing. I think Ant still probably has that bit of FOMO, and I think he still wishes he could be the one out riding there. I think like any sporting coach always says, you know, they hate the fact that once that race starts, there's nothing they can do. And he, I think he still feels that every race. But the fact is, I mean, for him, I think Anthony will be the first to admit he's learned a lot to learn that side of the game. And, um, you know, we've got incredible people we've been working with, you know, um, you know, like Tony and Joe Mincioni. Uh, we worked with... Um, uh, Sue, um, Sue Brass, you know, um, you know, Sally Brass, Sally sorry, Brass. Sally Brass, sorry, no. Sally, so, apologies, Sally, <laughs> uh, Sally Jordan, Sally Brass, um, you know, and I mean, uh, you know, Clinton Binder is a big part of our stable, you know, and you know, Clint is Clint, you know, but the beauty about Clint is that he, he wants what's mm-hmm. best for, for Hollywood and he wants what's best for the people he works with. So, I mean, I think, you know, we, we, you know, we always, 
might be you know learning from each other boxing with each other but we always got the same target and same goal in mind and uh, I think you know if you look at the success of the Hollywood Syndicate how it's grown over the last few years especially when Anthony's taken over yes we've acquired more horses but the quality is getting better I think that's I think that's the the beauty is when you got guys like Michael Roberts and Garth Puller saying to you this this horse can run you know this fully is decent and or you know you've got a decent horse in your hands that's coming from other horsemen you know i think anthony's definitely on the right, right track, track. And yeah i remember when we, we before we did that that podcast with anthony um i think you were on about 98 winners or 99 yeah. winners or something like that and he said i said to him Geez, that's a good achievement he said yes but we haven't had a group one yep he said it's no use getting 100 winners we need a group one yeah. <laughs> well, well that's what people remember yeah. and um I mean, I think we'll get there. I, th- I think we've got some decent horses now, especially that we've seen massive potential over, you know, as two-year-olds and, and, and you know, the, the, some three-year-olds that have really blossomed. And now, yeah, we head into this Cape season with a, a few in our armory, which is quite nice. And I think, obviously, all the incentives, is a, you know, encourage the trainers to send the horses down. But, um, yeah, we've got a few, I think, to look out for, which is going to be exciting. Yeah, you don't want to go to Cape Town with a dud. <laughs> no, no. Of you, will, you will finish at the back. <laughs> yeah, well, no, that, as, as Dave says, they've got some lovely horses to go down with. But now, the Hollywood Syndicate, it, it, that's, you know, obviously it's a syndicate. Are there just general owners that are involved? Or is it mainly just a company company thing? Or, or the, and I mean, can, can anyone get involved in the Hollywood Syndicate? Or? Uh, so when it uh, originally started, it was, it was actually for the punters. It okay. was for all the Hollywood bets punters from our park branch you know we always called them table one you know the, okay. the, the guys who were the locals who were there every day and it was it was an opportunity for them to be part of you know a syndicate in ownership of a racehorse I mean you know our first winner was Splendid Night in 2002 which Paul Lafferty trained and then went on to get trained by Baron Bottas and actually won quite a number of races I think won eight races for us and it, but it, then it was you know bringing together our customers, our team, Clyde Becker was a big part of that. Uh, Matthew Lips was our nominee at the time. Um, and that was all about, you know, getting exposure and, and, and kind of getting people involved in ownership. But eventually it got to a stage where, as you know, ownership of horses is very expensive. Um, and for us, it became a thing where it kind of died down a bit. We'd have the odd horse here and there that we'd go. And then eventually it came to about 2015, 2016, where he said, well, let's turn it up now and let's get cracking again and um, it was through that where we said okay it'll be under the Hollywood syndicate banner as it's always been um, but primarily owned by Hollywood Best as a company okay. so um, yeah I think that's that's always been the how it's been since but the beauty is that for us we like to include our team in the ownership so we like to include our brand ambassadors we like to include our partners so the thing is although it might run under the hollywood syndicate banner it might be owned by us 100 percent or leased by us the fact is that we've got an enormous amount of people who are part of that syndicate who get to live through that syndicate whether it's through the naming of horses whether it's the the following horses whether it's coming to summerfeld to meet them whether it's going to the race courses to watch them live whether you're in joburg cape town durban pe uh, you know, the thing is that we are sending people to learn about racing, to be part of the Hollywood Syndicate, to be able to go into the parade ring, a privilege that not many people would have had to, the opportunity to experience. And the whole point of that is we're now exposing more people to racing. We're getting educating more people about racing. And we've seen this massive upturn, especially in our team, where, you know, especially when it comes to the naming of horses, sure. that, you know, has really enlivened people. I mean, you, you talk to our team and you, you can talk about do it again and you can talk about, you know, these other champions like Komatidung, but you mentioned Shampompo Shampizi and the team go mad, you know, because <laughs> they know Shampompo. You talk about Isi Vungu Vungu, you know, or Emilenze Yoko Duguma, you know, the guys live those horses sure. because they are part of it yeah. you know they're part of hollywood they're part of the ownership and they get to lead it in they get to meet the trainers and jockeys they get to come here to summerfelt i mean it's a it's a privilege for me to be able to take teams around um you know it's a it's a thing i do weekly you know where i get to take 15 different team members whether they security whether they um from our printing team from our marketing team accounts audits hr i mean we've had our partners we've had the hollywood bets dolphins the salsi sharks we've had 
you know, actors, actresses, you know, it, it, it's a whole point is, is how can we educate more people? How can we introduce more people to racing? And the Hollywood syndicate has allowed us just to give that extra feel to it and touch to it. And uh, I mean, you look at horses like Spider's Corner that was named by Brian Beloy, you know, is a, I think it's a five time, six time winner, actually. It's running know? on Sunday. Yeah. You know, and I mean, that, that horse has done amazing. We were talking about Duncan Howes earlier, you know, and uh, um, it's, it's just amazing. You know, he now then shares that with all his followers sure. and gives more exposure to the game of horse racing. Sport, I mean, you've touched on cricket, you touched on rugby and, and you know, all facets of, of, of different sports. But this weekend, uh, no, I'm sorry, not this weekend, next weekend, there's, there's a bit of, I see on social media, there's a Hollywood marathon, go, it's a 10K run or a 10K marathon. That's, a, that's quite fun, actually. You've done that quite a few years now. Um, yeah, we had our first one last year, um, our Hollywood Bets 10K uh, Summer Challenge, which is, is, is really fun. Um, yeah, we, <laughs> we had the Brentford guys out here last year and we coaxed them on the Friday night before, um, after a few uh, cold ones to, to, to enter in the race and we got them up at half four in the morning for a pickup and uh, we managed to do it and it was fantastic. Um, I mean, we've got the Hollywood Bets Athletics Club, which has grown from what was a casual running club, you know, between our team members to, to over a thousand members now, um, where we've even got an elite team that are running. So. Um, you know, to now to be able to have our own race um, and the second year having it um, is, has been amazing. You know, we've obviously been involved with a lot of road running now through the club, through the athletics club, you know, sponsoring um, Soweto Marathon, um, the Great Train Race in Mpumalanga, and now obviously the one everyone knows is the Comrades Marathon, which is um, one of our proud things. And I mean, this year, one of our sponsored, well, one of our elite athletes finished six overall and he finished second in the two oceans so it, it's it's been amazing to kind of take our brand to another market to to kind of showcase um our support for another sport and um you know road running is is one of my passions and i think um especially of morgan shandu who's our ops manager um you know and he's been the driving force between him and greg glossop behind that legs club and it's just grown from strength to strength and yeah um you know the entries are still open so if anyone's keen they must get down to um it's going to be outside hollywood bets king's park in the athletic stadium and uh yeah it's 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 a fun race it, it starts at king's park finishes at well starts at the leg stadium and finishes there and uh yeah it's uh, around the german beachfront uh, double loop and yeah uh, Count me out. I was just say, no. Are you going to do it? No. Well, oh, Warren, it's 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 just down the road from where you are. So if you fall out of bed, you can you <laughs> no, know, I, you just sleep with your tackies on. I, and, I you could know. I could be a starter. I could be a starter. James uh, Jimmy the Rich, the resident tipster for Winning Form, did say he would send me the link to join up, which I'm just. Well, I don't think Jimmy will okay, be. Okay, so you heard it here first, eh? Yeah. <laughs> Warren, Warren, Warren will be running. Yeah, I, I, I could be a starter. I could certainly be a starter. So uh, there we go. So that's the 10k. Let's talk about. Uh, the summer challenge that's happening in KwaZulu Natal now. Million Rand you guys have put behind the summer challenge. And also, I want you to touch on the punters challenge. We might as well kill two birds with one stone. Yeah, so I think, I think they, they're two different things, which I think um, is, is, is nice. I mean, obviously, everyone knows the Hollywood Bets punters challenge. That, that's been for the punters. Yes. I think that's, that's grown over the last two years. I mean, we've, on average, now have over 10,000 people playing every KZN race meeting, which is incredible. We've now expanded it to um, Cape Racing to cover Hollywood Bets Devonville and Hollywood Bets Kenworth. And now we've also done Hong Kong and Singapore racing. Um, obviously, with you know, the big fields and the, you know, the amazing amounts of information that's available out to everyone, it's, it's a fun thing that we're able to expand to. And the fact is the Hollywood Bets Punters Challenge is free to play. All you need is a Hollywood account. And, I mean, to date, we've already given, well, we've awarded out over six and a half million rand. Now, that's, that's money going back to punters. And I think the beauty is that, you know, whether you know horse racing or don't know horse racing is you can take part. And whether you're choosing your favorite color, you're following your saddle cloths, or whether you're following your favorite number, uh, or just the horse's name. And the, the beauty is that some people might think, oh, well, are they really horse racing people? The thing is, now they're following horse racing. Yes, they, they're checking the results. I mean, we've got it at the offices. We have our own internal team challenge. So our internal team is all marked as team, so they, um, they don't count as part of the main um, 
you know external or the competition that everyone else plays but when the racing's on everyone is watching everyone's screaming their horses home because you know they want a bit of the, their prize money so i mean it's it's been amazing to see the growth i still think there's a lot more we need to do i think there's a lot more that the the competition can expand to that we want to take it to the next level i think creating pools where people can play with their own groups you know um being able to include form and to include more information in the selections. But I mean, at the moment now, you can see how many people have selected a horse. You can see the odds that are constantly updating. Scratchings come through, um, you know, and you, you can change your selections up to five minutes. So I always say five minutes before the first race. So I always tell people, you know, go on, choosing your lucky number, choose your lucky number, but get your picks on. Yeah, you know, because you don't have a ticket, you don't, you don't have a chance. Isn't that bloke who won the bar, he the last two, four races, lost three races or something, he just took his lucky number. Four, four, four. Could, could well have done. Did you see yesterday at Hollywood Best yeah. Durbanville? Oh, poor man. Yeah, the he had a short he head. So close, yeah. No, but the bloke who won it, he, yeah, he didn't know he what he just put four because this is his lucky number. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it, uh, yeah, Anton Marcus rode that horse. Yeah. And it, I'm, I'm, I, I can imagine Anton probably had a little bit of impetus because I think it was a few weeks before he was also on the favourite or the, the selection. Yes. And he got beaten oh, on, the, yeah, on the line, sure. you know. But what nice, what's fantastic is, you know, especially with Gold Circle and the commentators and um, the presenting team is, you know, we've got the, the stats that are coming up throughout the, the race day. And uh, everyone's kind of following, but then when you see it, five out of five, six out of six, seven out of seven, and there's one person left, you know, kind of everyone shouting. You can almost hear sometimes in Craig and Sheldon's voice, you know, that you, you can hear which horse they're shouting home, you know, because you, you want to see people win. I mean, the Absolutely. biggest winner we've had to date, the guy won 2.325 million rand. So sure. yeah, that was the exact number, but 2.3 million rand yeah. always, for free. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I always needle uh, Carl Dickin because maybe... He blew them out in the last league and it was a stable companion. <laughs> oh, geez, I don't talk like that. But I mean, the beauty of that is also, you know, it's not just the bonus. I mean, there's 10,000 Rand up for grabs every race meeting. So, I mean... So it, that yeah. chap that ran second yesterday, he would have got a little consolation. He got you. consolation. Unfortunately, the horse that beat him, um, uh, yeah, was, I think it was an eight to one shot or seven to one shot. And the person, he ended up finishing third, unfortunately. Oh, shame, <laughs> that, but that's the, I think that's the beauty about yeah. the punters challenge. It's very uncomplicated. Yeah. You know, you know you're, obviously your points are based on how many horses are in the field. So if there's 12 horses, you get 12 points for win and then the bonus of the, the fixed odds price. So a lot of guys might argue, well, I picked seven winners. But, you know, this guy picked 150 to one shot and he wins. Yes. But my, my thing is, at the end of the day, who's, if he was betting money, who's leaving with the most money at the end of the day? Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. You know, it's the guy who, who, who found picked the 50 to one, the 50 shot, to yeah, one shot. Tell me, so Devin, who actually sits down and works out all these, these uh, competitions and things? Though? We have it, it's, it's pretty uncomplicated also. I no, think no, it's but who comes up with all the ideas? To, I think it's, to, it, it's a team thing. I mean, it, it, you know, it, it, I mean... You're actually doing these things. No, I think that's the funny thing about Hollywood is and we've always said we don't have a marketing team. You know, I mean, it's 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 kind of whether it's Owen or Seren or Devin or Kirsty or it might be, you know, someone in the branch. You say, like, why don't you do this competition? It might be a punter who suggests it to us, you know. Um, but there, there's always these different things. And I think, you know, if you ever read Sporting Post or you read ABC and you, and you see some of the initiatives that we come up with, a lot of them is because of the feedback we get. And I think that's the difference between us and other people's. One, we can take criticism, and two, we, you know, we think like punters. And I, I mean, I've even fallen into that trap before. We say, well, you know, this is the right thing to do, but it's not necessarily the fair thing. And that's the thing is that what Hollywood has always done is do the fair thing. So I mean, these kind of competitions come out, get born out of those kind of things, where it might be as simple as saying, well, let's do a punters comp. Nice and easy. I mean, I think actually the first competition actually grew out of was Holly Bucks. I don't know if yeah. you played yeah. Holly Bucks. Yeah. Yes. I mean, you remember Holly Bucks? I mean, that was always a lot of fun, you know. And I mean, but there, you know, you had guys you had you know, 10, 20 different accounts playing, you know. But <laughs> it was always fun, what you know, following the tipsters and yeah. seeing if you, you know, you could compete against them. And um, but the punters challenge is something that's been amazing. It's it's really gone from strength to strength. And hopefully, yeah, we can keep giving away more money and introducing more people to racing. But um, Touching on the Sizzling Summer S Challenge. Sizzling Summer Challenge, yeah. Yeah, so the Sizzling Summer Challenge is an um, initiative we've done twice before. Um, it's mainly for the trainers, the jockeys, the apprentices, and the owners. So I think it was one of those things, I think, with all the, the hoorah now around Cape Racing, was we didn't want to lose focus with KZN Racing, which goes back to what you were saying earlier, saying, is KZN going to get forgotten about? And it's not. 
that, that is where the Sizzling Summer Challenge comes in. So we've got over a million rand, which we've broken out over the, the trainers and then the horses, which is in effect the owners, the jockeys and the apprentices. And yeah, there's um, 400,000 rand for the, uh, the trainers, uh, 400,000 rand, 400, for the for the owners, uh, 220,000 rand for the jockeys, and 30,000 rand for the apprentices. So yeah, I mean, there's different breakdowns. I mean, you know, people might say, well, if you're a trainer and you've got the most horses, which is the whole thing's based on points. But like the punters challenge, but sans the uh, the fixed odds bonus points. It's based purely on finishing position and number of runners in a race. Um, so it's uncomplicated. It runs. It started on Sunday and runs until the 30th of December. And uh, yeah, I mean, it's one of those things, it's, it's about consistency. One of the initiatives we've introduced this year for the trainer and jockey is the best strike rate. So your best average points That's per crazy. runner, you know, well, per ride or per runner for the trainer. And uh, I think when you look at the prize breakdown for the, the trainers, we've gone 50, 40, 30, 20, 10, as opposed to, you know, a big spread. Because the point is, you know, we, we, we want to spread the love. We want to make sure that everyone can be a part of the challenge yeah. and then again there's a 25,000 rand bonus in there for the best strike rate so you might not necessarily have 100 horses you might only have 20 horses but over the two and a half months if your horses are performing you're going to get that extra bonus so i mean yeah i mean it's, it's a nice thing for the jockeys too um you know for them it's just the top 10 the trainers are top 20 and the jocks are going to be a little bit more competitive i mean how good has it been this season already i mean you know sure. keegan de has been on fire richard free you know, is never far behind. I mean, I mean, I, I think the beauty of it, which I was, I say to a lot of my team that I bring here, you know, is is the, is is the quality of black African jockeys that we've got. You know, Cabello Matsanyane had an incredible run. Phenomenal. You know, I mean, Muzi Yeni, Smanga Kamala. You know, I mean, Louis Nkotwa. You know, I mean, it's 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 been amazing to see the progression of of these guys and and them fighting a tooth and nail. And I mean, you know, we're in a stage. I think, you know. You're always going to have the jocks say, oh, our error was better and all that stuff. But the fact is, I think we've got a bit of a, an error that's starting. Yes. And hopefully, yeah, I mean, obviously it's a loss to be losing the likes of Warren Kennedy and Craig Zaki now to overseas to New Zealand. But the fact is, we've got some emerging talents coming up. So hopefully, yeah, we can keep supporting them through these different initiatives. I think it's one way for us to give back to the, continue to give back to the game. Um, I think that's always been it, you know, is to look at all the different stakeholders in the games. I mean, we've obviously got the Grooms Initiative, which is still going, and that's going to continue now. Um, I mean, already now we are 50 runners now away from our 2,500th winner for the Grooms Initiative. So that's going to be over 2.5 million rand that we've given back to the Grooms. And obviously now we've just launched the, the Grooms Initiative. When I say we, also the Grooms Initiative, that's between Hollywood Bets and Gold Circle. And now we've launched it in the Cape, with between Cape Racing and, and Hollywood Bets. So, um, yeah, I think we you, we've covered pretty much everyone, you know. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. And then, yeah, let's see how. I must it goes. say that Hollywood is a really amazing organisation. I've got somebody, to take my hat off to own. But you, you, you're quite right. You've got to take your hat off to own, and they are an amazing organisation. I had the privilege of going to the head office, and and in fact, on several occasions. Um, do we need some more water? You want to? It's a uh, to wonder. Why don't you ask if we can have some lovely water, please, if you wouldn't mind, just for our dry throats. Um, the, you go to the Hollywood at uh, Springfield, at, at least the head office in Amschlange. Team Ridge. support. Warren. Team support. <laughs> team support. Uh, <laughs> and I tell you, it's just, you get welcomed, you get greeted. There's, uh, I saw that, Pat, your blooming name. Absolutely. That's, uh, make everybody feel special, and quite rightly so, because everybody uh, plays a part, and, and uh, no matter who goes there, you'll be made to feel special. That's why, as you say, they're an amazing organization. How many people do Hollywood, um, thank you, uh, employ? And I know that you pride yourself in, in knowing it to the exact amount. Yeah, so the number at the moment is 6,031. So, yeah, I mean, getting over the 6,000 mark was an amazing achievement. It's something we push for. Um, um, our CEO, Seren Rampasad, is, you know, an incredible leader in that certain incredible people manager, you know, and it's been his goal to get us one to the 100 retail branches and, and well, secondly is the 100 retail branches, but firstly is to 6,000 team members. I mean, a lot of those team members work in our retail, you know, around South Africa and um, obviously our mobile promoters on the ground. And um, it's a special thing, you know, I think, you know, you're not just employing 6,031 people, you, you're supporting 
their families and their dependents which come with it and I think that's always going to be a big thing for us as Hollywood is, is family and team um, and yeah it's, it's something we hopefully yeah we're not going to stop there we're going to keep growing and um, yeah it's, it's an incredibly diverse business that has so many facets that has also allowed us to grow to that level it's also you talk about them being spe- so special sorry this is the uh, not sorry this is the liver plus hydrated wonder water so there's that wonder water yeah it's yeah. delicious it's actually got a lovely taste Hello, louis. It. thanks to you louis yeah, yeah. <laughs> now um you know you talk about the, they don't miss a beat it's your birthday you get given a magnificent gift you succeed you you win an award you get given a lovely congratulatory present it's your birthday that pops it's just they don't miss a beat and 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 the, the bottom line is they make people feel special i go on you say oh you know you must make people feel, of course you must make people feel special why not no matter whether you're the ceo or owner of a company to the lady or gentleman that 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 does the simplest of job make everyone feel special that's why they're success success breeds success okay Gallup TV, um, the partnership with Gold Circle and Hollywood Bets with Gallup TV, that's also been a phenomenal uh, project, great yeah. project. I was watching uh, uh, from home yesterday uh, the You were supposed to be at work. I was at work, <laughs> working from home. The Hollywood Bets, Durbanville, did you, the race card was on time, was it not? No, it was. was so. There we go, don't complain. You can do the work from the roof here as long as the work's on time. But uh, the quality of that picture is phenomenal. Yeah. Um, Again, it's one of those things. Um, Gallup TV was one of those projects. Again, came born out of survival. I think with you know, the you know the business rescue of Pomalela and Teletrack's contract coming to an end. You know, there was this doubt of whether you know with with full racing of whether they would be taking the case in a racing picture. And again, it, it comes to down to that key of survival and saying, well, listen, you know, between ourselves and Gold Circle and Michelle Nairak and. Steve Marshall and the team there, you know, an incredible production team at GTV and, and, and Gold Circle was, you know, Sherwin and his team was saying, well, listen, we've got to get this product together. Um, you know, working with the guys from Telemedia, um, Steve Breathwick, you know, and Wes and all the guys up there. I mean, it's been amazing how we've, we've managed to take a product that, I mean, a lot of us don't know necessarily a lot about the broadcast business, but we watch enough racing and we, 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 we know enough good people to get stuck in and i think the beauty of gallup tv is is it's it's been about quality it's about how can we constantly improve the product i mean we have what i told earlier about our bent meetings we've introduced that now with gold circle and the gtv team and gallup tv we meet every tuesday to discuss you know how can we improve the product where are we lacking you know someone might post a comment on a forum saying hey the picture wasn't great today or there's a problem with this decoder or there's um you guys had the wrong graphics you know that's one of those things we want to hear those things we want to improve the product um i mean a great thing is now through cape racing you know them now taking over the ownership of their picture and coming to an agreement is now they've got we've got that on gallup tv too so i mean now to have kzn and cape racing we've got half the product inside of south africa on our channel what are the chances of getting Joburg? um i think there is a chance I think I think um, you know I think that's going to primarily come down to I think uh, a few more meetings between I think Greg and 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 the full racing team. Um, you know, ideally, what we want is is to have the product available to as many people as possible. possible. I think that's always been the goal. I mean, the fact is, Gallup TV is free, so you know, you, you I mean, you can you can watch the clean feed easily off your browser, or you just sign up. It takes a few. It takes a half a minute, and you can watch live racing from anywhere and not into just kzn racing or cape racing you can watch international racing and i think and gallup, racing. yeah yeah absolutely. i mean i mean gallup tv was born for the punter i think that that was the primary thing and i, I know there you know you you have your lifestyle shows and you have other things that you know your your other media that you want to show on there but the fact is you have to make a decision what do you what do you want to be and for us we want to sell bets the tote needs turnover, so let's focus on that. And I think if you, I mean, I'm not taking anything away from Racing 240, but if you look at the, the difference in the content, we've always been racing first. You know, we'll, that will always take priority. And that's the stance you've had to take. It's not everyone's cup of tea, but you've got to, you've got to you, know, you know, stick your flag in the sure, sand kind sure, of thing. Absolutely. So, but it, I mean, it's worked extremely well. It's going from strength to strength. As we mentioned, the sectional timing's now got underway. Um, you know, 
I think the one thing we want to start doing is getting more Gallup TV into more um, more facilities, more pubs, more clubs, uh, more restaurants, bars. Um, that you know, I think with that now the licensing, you know, taking away that noise, we can now focus on getting into more places. So, if people are looking at installing in their bars or, or club houses or anything, please, you know, approach us. You know. We'll, we'd be happy to install it in for you. You know, yeah. I think that's that's the one thing that's that thing, yeah. that was what we wanted to do from the get go. And I mean, for instance, I mean, the question was asked. You know, do we have it in all our branches? And it's like, of course. You know, is it on? Yes. Yeah, yeah. We, I mean, it's <laughs> that. I mean, that. Funny enough, you know, you, you can install something, but if it's now showing the soccer or something else, you know, you're losing out. So it's one of those things we. You've got to have that desire. You've got to have that drive, that passion to make sure that your product's out there and doing it well. And you know, you've always had those people who say, oh, I could run that, I could do yeah. that. Now we've got it, and you've, you've got to take that opportunity with both hands. Dev, what did I say in horse race? He'll be turning into the home straight with the <laughs> 250 meters to go. And uh, I just want to touch on a, a few other things here. Um, I say personal, not personal, but uh, where do you live? Where are you based? Where's home for you? I mean, I know it's Durban, but whereabouts in Durban? Uh, yeah, born and bred Durban North. Huh? Okay, Durban yeah. North. And um, hobbies? Still play, still play some cricket. I okay. love my cricket. So, okay. um, yeah, that's uh, probably been the biggest thing for me. Um, and uh, Must be a fast bowler. No, no, actually opening bat, actually opened oh. the batting with uh, Steve Marshall, funny <laughs> enough. So, um, yeah, Gold Circle and Hollywood are, you know, partner up in more ways than one. So, yeah, we both play for Crusaders. We've had a, quite a bit of fun uh, playing for the Thirsty Thirds, as we call them, the World Eleven. So, yeah, yeah. They'll, they'll appreciate the shout out there. But, um, yeah, and then, yeah, I mean, I, I, love, I love reading. I love listening to audio books. I think that's probably my okay. biggest uh, hobby at the moment. Uh, obviously, doing a lot of driving now, doing... You know, with a lot of traveling and everything, it's, I, I, it's the best way to, to read books. I would never have read as many books as I had. I think probably in the last two years, I've probably read close to 70, 80 books. Sure, that's you know, and that's just because you're listening to it yeah. day in and day out. So, yeah, I mean, that's pretty much it. And now, obviously, horse racing has is, is, is become probably one of my main hobbies now. I think when you're working with a guy like Anthony, you, you're watching every horse run now. I mean... I, I'm the first person to phone him, you know, if, if I beat Clint Binder to it, you know, <laughs> but it, it's, you know, it's, it's to chat about the race and, you know, I mean, I'm learning a lot. Um, I was lucky enough to go to the BSA sales in August with him and, and Tony and Joe Mincioni and really learn more about, you know, the, the, the sales side of things, learning about confirmation and the stud book and, and all that and the sales catalog and it, it it's, a, it's, it's, there's so much to learn but it's fun it's it fun is. stuff you it's know? fascinating stuff it's about trying to get young people involved in it. Yeah. it most of them say well it's far too complicated but once you get into it I mean it's, it is good fun it is good well fun. I think I think that's the thing is you know you try to simplify it you know you try to look at um, criteria that you say okay well listen you know if, if the dam hasn't had you know yeah. uh, three winners then you know we pass them on you know if the merit rating isn't of a certain standard we pass them on but then you start looking at the ones you do like and I mean I, I mean I was blown now. away you know a, a person like Joe Mincioni and you know Sally Bruss they they the way they can read horses and that their, their, their confirmation and they can see a slight inset or they can see the slight disfiguration of a hoof or, or something that I mean us mere mortals can't even you know identify yeah. but you know it's all those little things that could somehow down the line make a big impact yeah. but it's been amazing learning from them and for me um, I always say you know you know there's no such thing as stupid questions the reason why you're asking a question is you don't know the answer sure, you know and sure. I think I think if we can have that approach more in life and in teaching people and I think that's where I've tried to do it with bringing people here to summer files is answering those questions that you and I take for granted and and it's the only way people are going to learn and as you say get through get their, their heads around what is quite a complicated game and simplified your favorite food oh uh, <laughs> a bry yeah, okay no, good no, no, traditional no, South African no, bry. nice nice and easy uh, yeah I think we'll keep it I think I think Tuesday night family dinner is always always a lot of fun with a, with a bry <laughs> or mom's roast so yeah. okay okay now um the bunny chars, the Hollywood 
bunny chows. My oh my, they are I'm world sure famous. That, yeah. No, no, I mean, uh, Bri, good if it's just saying we can have two favorites, yeah. Bri and the bunny chow, but the bunny chows are just well. Who is the chef? Do you have a variety of chefs? I mean, that Hollywood curry and world famous. Yeah, it, it's been amazing how, again, you know, we've had so many businesses grow out of the Hollywood Bets brand or the Winning Form brand and almost, you know, unplanned. I think the biggest thing for Hollywood's success at the beginning was the beer must be ice cold <laughs> or your beverages must be ice cold and the bread must be fresh. And the thing is, again, it wasn't a case of us saying, oh, well, you know, I like a bunny chow, so we're going to start selling it. It was our punters. Our punters were coming to our branch and they're saying, we want to buy food. We don't want toasted sandwiches. We don't want, you know, you, you know, the food that you and I would want. We want curry. We want, and not curry that you and I would make. We need an Indian auntie making the curry. Yeah. And, and, and that's the beauty is that that is what we did. And the beauty is when you've got guys like Seren, who, who his wife Patsy is an incredible chef. Well, she's not a chef, but the food she makes is amazing. And him being the taster and tester and, you know, <laughs> there's always, you know, the quality control, as we say. You know, it, it's, it's amazing how that product has just grown and grown. And I mean, we've won Bunny Chow of the Year competitions where, you know, we're a betting company. You know, and, and it's, it's just amazing <laughs> that, I mean, we've actually had to open our own takeaway store yeah. in opposite Springfield Park in the, in the retail center there because the punters were losing space. You know, they, they, they were guys that were just coming there for the bunnies and they weren't coming to punt. punt. But <laughs> luckily enough, we've now got a family friendly um, takeaway, which is right opposite the branch. But we've still developed that deck outside, which is a beautiful place to go and sit and watch a sport, watch a racing enjoy a good meal you know and uh i think that the whole thing of it is is it's made fresh the bread is fresh and it's it's made by the right people yeah well i'll, I'll tell you how famous it's got because uh hollywood bets doom in july the uh, international press contingent was there and the one auntie from america I, I forget her name said i've got to try a hollywood Bunny chow. Yeah. <laughs> so we had to go. Jürgen was out looking for bunny chow. <laughs> well, the beauty is it's on the race course now. Yes, which, right. I mean, I, and that's been a big hit. Hey? Yeah, I mean, yeah. I mean, a lot of the guys, especially, you know, your, your Joburg Raiders, yeah, you know, yeah. the owners and trainers that come down, you know, they, they go straight to the lightning shot to, yeah. uh, to, to go to the bunny bar. But that bunny bar has actually moved upstairs now to the short the head short bar. Head, yes, so, yeah, yeah. yeah it's, uh, for those who might think we've left the course, you've actually just gone upstairs. And uh, it's a fantastic facility up there. And, uh, yeah, we, we're going to be working a lot more with uh, Gold Circle in, in improving that area. And making it into a really great area to race from so yeah hopefully we can get more people visiting that and the goal is to get more people there on non-race days as well and make okay. it a, a a real um you know off like well it's an on-course branch could, could there be oh so it's an on-course branch so that, that could, so you can get a you can get a bunny chime place your pa or whatever correct so, okay yeah, and watch fantastic. racing from there because it's a it's a fantastic Jeez, setup there. Yeah. so yeah i mean watch the space i mean uh, yeah, I mean, our, our star bar and cafe team who, who run the Hollywood Bunny Bar, they, they're working very closely with that, um, with yeah, Hollywood Bets Gravel and the Gold exciting. Circle team. So, yeah, yeah, I keep an eye on the short head. Yeah, well, on the days, that I go, the days that I go to the office, uh, my office, my moving my desk to the short head bar. So if there's bunny <laughs> chars and there's TVs to watch and to race, then uh, that's where I'll be operating from. Before we close, one other thing I want to touch on before we close. And we're going to have to have Devon in, and I'm sure he'll be more than happy to for a set part two in, in time to come. <laughs> is we've got to pay tribute to your mom and dad and your family. You've got two brothers and a sister, but you know, and we love them all very much. But your mom and dad, I think, are, are a very special couple, and to see them being awarded, uh, you know, at the previous, at the most recent awards ceremony in KZN, Owen and Leslie, just yeah. I mean, we we need another five hours to talk about them, but just quickly as we close. Must be so proud of your parents, as I'm sure your parents are so proud of, of you and your brothers and sisters. Yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, I think proud and pride is probably an understatement. I mean, to see where they've come from and what they've achieved um, is is just amazing. You know, a very young family starting out, and just that that passion and will and drive to to succeed and to survive. I think again, you know, and. It's just been amazing that, you know, family is something that's really important to us. Um, you know, we're a very close-knit family. I mean, we still have our 
family dinners every week you know that you know anyone who knows us knows the famous tuesday night dinners but it's 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 one of those things we um you know what Owen and Les have achieved and the fact is you know i always say that they could have gone in a different direction they could have walked away from the game of horse racing you know and the thing is they love the game so much um i mean you know that's the thing i mean we look at the growth of soccer betting growth of lucky numbers casino all that stuff and I mean, you know, you can change your priorities. You can say, listen, we're not going to focus on it anymore. And instead, you know, they've doubled down, you know, on, on, on what is their passion. I mean, for those of who've been following racing for a long time, I mean, their first sponsored race was the Winning Form Challenge. Yeah, you know, that's right. Yeah. Um, you know, Northern Princess, you know, I mean, that, you know, that was... was yeah, a, it was uh, that... Uh, in 80, match 87, race. yeah, match the match race. race, yeah. Yeah, with Senor Santa. Yeah, yeah Senor Santa and the Northern Dancer. I mean, it was... Uh, amazing, you know. Um, For anybody who's out there, we should actually uh, go, go, go into YouTube and, and yeah, it's there. It's brilliant. It is. Yeah, it's still there. You can watch it. Yeah. And I mean, I mean, you look at that. You know, I mean, winning form. You know, I loved Greg Borter's story about him talking about you know the day he walked into Owen's office to convince him to sell winning form in Cape Town, and he was wearing shorts and yeah. a shirt, and he returned. Uh, you know, 35 years later, and you're still wearing shorts and a shirt. <laughs> you know, just albeit in a different office. You know, yeah. and I think I think that's I think that just testament to him. I mean, he's always been out of the limelight. I think the success the success of the business. You know, himself and Seren both stay out of the limelight because their goal is eye on the prize kind of thing. They they leave it to us lighties to get stuck in. Um, and the thing is, I, I think Owen's probably the one person who put his hands up and say he'll always try to find someone better than him to do the job. And but you know, you you need a dictator, That's you a need a hard. leader, you know, <laughs> you know, and you need someone who who knows what they want and has a different way of thinking. I mean, you know, we we've got a great ways of taking on the system. You know, being bent, always trying to be better next time. And uh, I mean. Yeah, I'm just incredibly proud. I think it was very special at the KZN Awards to have um, Anita Akel nominate us. I mean, Anita, you know, she's the doyen of KZN Racing. I mean, since I was born, you know, she, she's been there. And, uh, you know, for her to, you know, honor Owen and Les was something, you know, really special. Kind of just gave it that extra, yes. you know, tip of the hat. And, um, yeah, I mean, the, the beauty is I, I don't think it's going to stop here. Um, you know, the business, I think we've always, you know, Owen, you know, will talk about his family, but he always talk about the Hollywood family. And, you know, it's those people that rely on, 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 on the decisions we make and the things we, the, the, the way we take the business and the, and the direction we head in. So if we can just keep going in the same way, uh, keep improving people's lives, you know, giving back, paying it forward, then, uh, yeah, I mean, you know, hopefully we can carry on doing what we've done best. But, uh, yeah, I, I must say, yeah, you know, they, they'll never talk about what they've achieved. Um, you know, they'd rather just have a beer and, and talk, <laughs> you know, about the soccer or talk about sport, you know. But uh, it, it really is incredible what they've done. And, yeah, I think, you know, you've got to take your hats off to them. That we will do, indeed. Take our hat off. And in fact, we've taken it off and on as many times and we'll continue to do that. What a podcast it's been. And as I said, we'll get Devin here in the next couple of weeks to do part two because there's still a few things on my agenda that we need to talk about. But time, time, time is always against us. But uh, yeah, uh, we'll uh, certainly get Devin back and we'll finish up and, and do a second part to this podcast. But thank you, Devin, for your time. Uh, it's been fantastic. Wow, it's been an enjoyable hour and a bit. And thanks for everything that you guys do and just for making everyone feel so special. And uh, we just look forward to bigger and better things. And I'm sure we'll be able to get down to Cape Town in the next couple of months and go and enjoy some racing down there. But uh, just, yeah, thanks to you and your whole team and your whole family. And it's been an absolute pleasure. Yeah, thanks, Ryan. And thanks to Andrew. And, yeah, thanks to Tawanda and the team. I mean, I'm very, very privileged to be on the show and, uh, you know, to share the Hollywood story. Um, and yeah, just a big thank you to all the listeners and all the punters and all the people who have supported us. Um, you know, we're all very much about Ubuntu and the community and everything, and we aren't anything without our community. So, big thank you to them, and hopefully, yeah, they can join us on this journey where we keep going yeah. forward. Thanks, Devin. I think what what's come out of this podcast is the whole Hollywood philosophy, and and how you people go about it, and it's it's been fascinating, and it's a big insight uh, for a lot of people. Always wondering, you know what happens at Hollywood. 
Uh, I f thank you very much for that. Cheers, thank you. That's a wrap from us. Uh, are you here next week or when, when do you start going on your leave? No, I'll be here next week. You'll be here next week. Okay, so we won't bid you farewell for your leave. So Andrew's here next week. That's a wrap from uh, the three of us and the whole team behind the scenes. Thank you to everybody. Please be safe as always. Uh, love one another. Positive, no negativity. And as always, we'll see you in the number one box. Thank you for watching this week's episode of In the Box Seat Podcast right until the very end. We hope that you enjoyed it because we certainly did. If you missed last week's podcast, In the Box Seat Podcast with Andrew and myself, please go and watch it here. And uh, last week's uh, episode will be right there for you to go and enjoy and watch as uh, we know you will certainly enjoy In the Box Seat Podcast from last week.